Okay, so this is going to be my review of JLA Earth 2, written by Grant Morrison, artwork done by Frank Quietly. Man, it is always gold when Morrison and Quietly get together, am I right? <laughs> and this is no different. This is a really good co uh, comic. Uh, JLA Earth 2 is, uh, for those who, who remember, this was the story that they loosely based Crisis on Two Earths on. Uh, however, having said that, though, I would take this over Crisis on Two Earths if they went with this story in instead. I didn't uh, I didn't hate Crisis on Two Earths. I just thought it was meh. It was just really meh. Anyway, uh, so for the uh, for those who uh, who aren't uh, who don't know what this story is, this is pretty much like that Star Trek episode with the Terran Empire and the Mirror Universe. It's a, it's a mirror universe story, is what I'm trying to say, people. <laughs> um, anyway, Earth. this story starts out with the Luthor from the, uh, deep, from the, from the, uh, ultra, from the other Earth breaking through antimatter and coming into the, into the main DC universe to ask for help for, uh, to basically ask for help from the Justice League to help him overthrow the crime syndicate of America and help him, you know, fix the world. So in that in that regard, it was really cool. It was really cool to see Superman and Batman and all the Justice League kind of have this big discussion on it's another universe that's kind of not in our jurisdiction. Do we really go over there and fix a, and fix this kind of world? And Superman is, and Wonder Woman are of course are all like you know we're the you know we're the Justice League for everyone that includes other universes. If these people are being bullied, we should go over there. Uh, you can kind of see the underlying message. Uh, well, I think there's an uh, me thinks there's an underlying message to Morrison's story with Earth Two. I'm just saying. That's just my, I think that's what it is. Is it's kind of, I think there's some underlying message for Earth Two, and I'll I'll talk more about those parallels later on. But anyway, the Justice League think they're doing the right thing of going over to Earth Two with the alternate universe Luthor, and. Uh, going over there to see, uh, to stop the ju the crime syndicate. Who, by the way, the crime syndicate of, uh, syndicate of America. It is they, these guys are a bunch of jerks. I mean, they are straight up assholes. Uh, they just have all this power and rule over the world. And the world itself isn't just isn't right. It's it, everything is that's bad is is good, and everything good is bad. Again, mirror M, uh, mirror universe logic. And kind of, it's kind of at its core, it is a mirror universe story. And it's a really good one, too. Um, there's some great stuff between how we know all of the, uh, all the different stories of, uh, of, uh, well, we don't know all, well, there are only five members of the Crime Syndicate of America, and each one of them have their own very cool stories. We have, like, uh, Ultraman, who's not li exactly like, and keep in mind, this is pre-52 Ultraman, you know, this isn't exactly the same story as uh, the one we saw in the New 52, but with the pre-52 Ultraman, uh, he was an astronaut who they were shot into space, and what had happened was, what had happened was, is that he got, uh, uh, he was badly injured, then these aliens came along, messed with his DNA, left him unstable, and he came back to rule Earth. Same thing with Owlman, he's really Thomas Wayne Jr., who, uh, his and his father, Thomas Wayne, is the commissioner? While well, we have uh, Commissioner Gordon as Boss Gordon, the head of the mafia in Gotham. In Gotham. Then we have Lois Lane, aka Superwoman. We don't really know a lot of her origin. Uh, Johnny Quick, the alternate universe Flash, is a is a drug addict. That's how he gets his super speed, pun intended. And then we have Power Ring, who is a uh, just a coward who has a ring that's considered a curse. So there you go, the Crime Syndicate of America. Uh, these guys, these five people kind of rule over the world, and the Justice League try to stop them. And they actually have a really good idea. They actually capture the the crime syndicate in their own base. I don't want to say how that happens, but it has something to do with Kyle Rayner uh, in here. So they try to fix this world, and then unfortunately, the world is so is the world isn't like their world. This world isn't like their world, so it doesn't play play by the same rules. I mean, there's this moment where Batman comes to uh, commis uh, to Commissioner or Wayne, and you know Wayne tells him, you know, thank you so much for getting rid of Owlman. Now we I can make a city state and get rid of the weak and leave the strong. And Batman is just like, okay, sure, go do yeah. 
Oh, we fucked up. <laughs> Again, this doesn't really focus on... This is what I love about Morrison's writing, JLA writing. It hardly ever focuses on one set JLA member. All the Justice League characters get a uh, spotlight, and I really like that. I really like how all the members... This is a, he no understands that this is a Justice League story. You know, these are Justice League... This is a Justice League comic. This isn't like, you know, Batman and his bitches. Uh, this is... Uh, they're all there. They're all there to s contribute a, per a meaning. And it's really cool. I mean, even Aquaman and uh, Martian Manhunter, who... Uh, get left be who are left behind to protect Earth in their uh, in their place, while the rest of the team is off in Earth Two or Earth One, uh, I guess you could say, or Earth Two or whatever. Yeah, it's backwards land. Anyway, <clears throat> um, what ha what basically happens is that the crime syndicate finds their way into the uh, into er into the art into the DC universe. They find it. They break in there. And the only two people standing in their way is Aquaman and Martian Manhunter, who hold up a really good line. They hold up against five members who are pretty much like their superhero counterparts, and they actually hold their own really well against the uh, the the uh, the crime syndicate. I mean, Aquaman easily takes out, I believe, Power Ring, and then he calls the entire Atlantean army to assist them in the battle uh, during for Washington D.C. It's really cool. And then we find out who the real big bad is, because this everything from Luthor coming to uh, to the main DC universe to this crime syndicate coming to the D to uh, the main DC universe and vice versa, and how everything is made, it's perpetrated by someone who it's it is an Earth Two character, but it's not Owl Man. I was actually thinking because again, I ha I hadn't read this uh, before I saw the movie before I read this book, so I thought to myself. Oh, it's got to be Owl Man, you know. Owl Man's got to be the one behind all this. Nope, it is the literally the last guy you expected. Literally, I literally was like, him. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, it is one of the Earth Two characters, and <clears throat> it uh, it did surprise me. It did really surprise me because I wasn't even thinking about this character, and it is a it. Um, it is a member of Superman's rogues gallery in our universe, but not in this one. Um, but I literally was not thinking that he would be the one behind all this. I was literally, like, they mention him a few times, because now he's like Superman's servant. But then, you know, suddenly, oh, that's what he needed to do. And it, tur and it took, and it turns out that, you know... The Justice League, of course, find out. Yeah, we can't fix this world's problems. You know, it needs to. It needs the rule of the crime syndicate. It needs this uh, chaos to control it as a weird way of order. And yeah, again, I'm kind of. You know, I don't know if Morrison was like sending a message or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, uh, Morrison's been... No I'm not saying that because, you know, that's what I picked up. Morrison's been known to do this before, like, a veiled, uh, underarching, you know, message to his story sometimes. So, I w it wouldn't put it past me if he was, uh, you know, talking about something. I don't know. I just read comics. I don't think... I don't think about the big picture. I just watch super... The guys in tights punch each other. That's what I came to read. Anyway... Really good story. I'm a huge fan of Grant Morrison. Of course, Frank Quietly's artwork is really good. Uh, I highly enjoy this. I highly recommend this if you're a Grant Morrison fan or a fan of just or Morrison's Justice League run, uh, or if you want, you didn't really uh, like Crisis on Two Earths or just thought it was okay and you want to pick up the original story. I'd say go with this. So yeah, that's pretty much my review for JLA Earth Two. I hope you all enjoyed this. And again, I highly recommend this. Go check it out. And yeah, pretty much uh, that does it for me. Anyway, I'm out.